Okay, so moving on from a simple installation, which you saw on my workshop, on my last video, this is on a slightly larger scale, but pretty much the same sort of idea and the same components have been used. Here we've got some barns out in the middle of nowhere that store, I think, up to four to five horses at a time. And when our friend comes to take the horses out and to feed them, to clean them out or whatever, often it's before work, which could be four or five o'clock in the morning, and then putting them away again in the evenings, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. Now in the winter, the winter months, it's a lot darker and she's got no power here. So what we decided to do is to try to create our own little power supply using the same principles as you've seen on my other videos. Inside there, we've got a battery pack, which I'll show you shortly, which powers inverters, which then lights up light bulb in there. We've got two bulbs in this part of the barn, one at the very back, which is for storage for hay and some other tools. And then as we go along, we've got more storage, more horses going here, all the way up to the far end. So altogether, we're using about six household light bulbs. Now they're equivalent to 100 watt light bulb each, but they are the energy efficient bulbs, so they use a lot less power. What we want to do also is be able to utilize this power, not just for the lighting, because in a glorious day like this, where we don't use much power, and we certainly don't need the lights, we want to be able to do things like clipping, clipping of the horses. So to have a useful power supply out here is a great benefit. Now, starting here with the solar panels, we started off originally with this one on the right hand side. Now this is a 50 watt um, power, um, solar power, or solar panel, and this was generating quite a good bit of power during the day, providing it was sunny. And in the wintry months, as you know, we don't get that much sun, and that's when you're gonna use the power the most. It wasn't quite enough. It wasn't always giving us the charge that we needed. So we then added this panel, which is 100 watt. So in total, 150 watts, powering up the batteries. And let's go inside now, and we'll go and take a look. So looking at what we've got built inside to the shed then, we start off with the panel. Now this is a board that I just threw together with some old bits and pieces left over. We've got the main uh, charger controller here. Uh, this is a maximum of 30 amp panel, but the maximum we've got coming in here is sort of nine amps, nine, 10 amps. So that's perfectly adequate for what we use. And as you can see, if it's picking up okay, um, we've got full power here and it's fully charged as well. So what we wanted was a system whereby we can just have this one battery that we've got down here. Now this is a 110 amp battery, just got crocodile clips on, so we can disconnect it and connect spare batteries should we need to, or to take this away for another application. Back up to the panel, we've got the cabling coming in from the solar panels from the roof. They come down and feed straight into this panel here. From this panel, we then go behind this board where these cable ties are, and we've got a DC to AC mains inverter, which is just plugged into the back. There's a 13 amp plug that plugs into there, which then comes up to these sockets and this light switch here. So we've got basically two outlets here, which will give us power for the clippers or portable radio for music or battery phone charge or whatever we want to charge, we can power it into there. And then we've got the light switch here and you can hear it turning off. That's the main power switch, okay, which controls the output. Now, we don't always want to have these lights on. I've got these lights on now just for demonstration purposes. However, during the winter months where we don't really want to be wasting electricity because we don't get that much sunlight, we want to be able to have this power inverter switched on so we've got these power sockets here energized, but we don't want to be wasting power with the lights being turned on. So we've just connected this one switch. That will now turn all these lights off because all these barn lights, all in this row here, for ease of use and to make life a lot more simple, is all controlled off this one switch. We don't want to be having to go into each individual barn turning things on and off. So we've just got the one switch that turns these five or six light bulbs, switch them on, okay? So this switch here enables us to disconnect all these lights, meaning we're saving power, and the only output then is whatever we've got plugged into these sockets here. Okay, so we've got this sticking out here. This is just the fuse. Because I'm mindful of the fact that of what we use inside this barn, I don't want to have any risk of any fires or any shocks or any problems. So we've got all everything fused correctly. 
for uh, ease of use, that goes straight to the battery. That's um, just a, a 10 amp, 10 amp fuse in there. Everything's fused all the way down, even down to the battery itself. We've got a separate fuse here. And then when we're not using, we're getting to that battery, we've just got this lid that sits on just to stop anything falling on top of the terminals, shorting it out. And then when we're finished doing what we're doing, that switch completely isolates the whole lot. Now this, um, for the last sort of half hour, this setup has been switched on with all the lights turned on. And if you look at the panel here, we've still got it showing full battery power. It's charging or it's trickle charging. That little charge battery light is just flickering on and off just to show that it's constantly checking itself out. But we've got full power. So just for the last half hour of using all these light bulbs, it's not made any difference at all um, to the power consumption. So we've got full battery power for the evenings when there's no sun. So a quick look back outside then, just to go over it again. Those are the two panels there. You can see the wire link between the one panel and the second panel. And once it's gone inside the shed, which is where all the gubbins is, just into there, we then come out of the shed, up there, then across into the barns. It goes right underneath the joists, all the way through. And you can, as you can see, if I can zoom out anymore, I can. As you can see there, we've got the first bulb. Uh, you can't see from the others there. But if we go into the back, this is a bit of a storage area, this is here. You can see we've got another bulb there, just lighting up, which is just more storage. And what we do, we just go from one bulb to the next. So we've got the, the bulb there, going into the next barn. This is all, all open at the top. You can see you can, we can get all the cables and everything all clips nicely up there. Another bulb there. And the next one. There you go. And you can see the wiring on the back joist going into the next room, which is just in here. There you go, and there's that bulb there. Now obviously it doesn't look all that bright in these bright weather conditions at the moment. However, I can assure you at night time, they do give off a good bit of light. Yeah. So we've come down here today just to do a bit more work. And as you can see on the floor, We've got the, uh, the evidence of the clippings that's been going on this morning. And all this has been made possible by having all this beautiful solar panel light and all this energy. So these are just panels you can get off eBay. They're not too expensive. And uh, that charger controller in there, that particular one I think cost me about eight or nine pound. They're not very expensive at all. It is a replacement. The original one that was purchased kind of blew up and stopped working. So there you go. So that's it. So any questions, give me a, drop me an email, drop me a, a direct message, and I'll answer them the best I can. Hope this video is of some use and some uh, educational purpose to you. And uh, I look forward to showing you the next video for my next project. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.